Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Rising of the Shield Hero, Season 2, Episode number 11, Reaction. Alright, the previous episode, um, we started with Naftalia being captured and uh, I thought that it was going to kind of drag the whole thing of Raftalia being captured and the final episode of the season will probably be now for me and Raftalia reuniting. Turns out nothing like that happened, you know, in one episode everything got resolved and a lot of extra thing also happened which I never thought would happen. Number one, she met uh, Glass, Lark and Therese over there and she was able to like, you know, burst out of the prison in like the first five minutes of the episode. Then they were trying to find out where Naofumi is going, going, trying to go back while leveling up and uh, they came across a shrine where the katana hero is going to get selected we meet kazuki again he thought that he was supposed to be the katana hero unfortunately the uh, sword chose raftalia as the wielder and obviously after getting that power boost raftalia started getting like you know like growing bigger and bigger and she had to run away from there otherwise the people will capture her so that happened and in the end with a little bit of help from a shrine maiden she was able to confront Kazuki and uh, use her newfound weapon which is a katana and she has become the katana hero I'm guessing. Interesting thing I never realized that you can even become like a hero from one going from one world to another like this is not Raftalia's world so I'm kind of curious how this what this means like their worlds are at odds like you know like it's like the whole survival of the fittest thing going on between the worlds so since raftal is from that world but he, she became the hero from this world i'm wondering what is actually even going to happen now so i'm sure i'll get my answers other like you know uh, either way uh, kazuki got defeated obviously kazuki is not having it he's like no like you know like this is my thing you stole it blah 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 all that stuff and we can see that you know like Raftali can take out mana using that sword and uh, by the end of it uh, uh, Nafumi uh, uh, comes in and uh, saves her from that huge beast and there you go they reunite and uh, yeah let's see what happens today I wonder what's going to happen from here on are they, are they going to go no uh, I was going to say are they going to go back to their world no they, they need to still defeat Kyo that's still unresolved so that we will have to do i'm guessing so probably we'll have to stay here longer anyways let's begin this is episode number 11 we're almost at the end of the season so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here think it to whichever is a preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go haha <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's a humming fairy, I think. She can fly at least. Yep. <laughs> now for me, it's like, hmm. Okay. <laughs> And this is Chris. Defeat the king of monsters. Wait, what? Emperor dragon? Oh. Oh. Wait, so what about Glass? They are fighting the waves, but why is Kizuna... Oh my god, not this guy again. Ah, oh, great, another one is here. Yo, what happened to your face? Your eyes are... Your eyes are messed up, what happened to your eyes? Yeah? Whoa! 
Wait, did he do that? That's why Raftalia said that don't move. Who is, who is this? Wait, is Kazuki dead? Oh god. Who is this? Oh my god. Wait, so Kazuki's dead? Well, that's good, I think. <laughs> like, at least one annoyance is gone. Yet he's not as annoying as Kyo. Kyo is an like the height of annoyance. <laughs> Wait, so that's why Raftalia said that don't move. Oh my god. So, <laughs> oh boy. I think we've met all the characters from the opening, and even the green-haired girl is here. The, the girl we saw in the end. So, yep. And here we are, back to... Kizuna's... <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. All right, now for me. Uh. Mm. <laughs> About the waves? Yeah. Here we go. Now... Wait, so... I want the reason. Their world is also in danger, isn't it? Young monster. Wait, is this his place or something? Oh god. Great. <laughs> well. Okay. I don't understand. So... Kill them. Oh, they... They're not even sure about that or... Ah, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. Like a shonen protagonist, you know? 
<laughs> oh boy. Yeah, we need to defeat him first. But maybe while trying to find Q, think about some, yeah, proper. Okay. Oh, these two. Wait, he's experimenting on him. Oh, he's not dead. God damn. You are, wow, you're asking him. He's, he'll probably give you some weird pill and it'll make you a monster or something. Oh, great. Before that, we need money. Uh, I guess, I guess he's a king, so. So he probably has a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Damn, everyone's like. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> well. Romina. Isuna Romina. Hmm. <laughs> yep, these are Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. She needs a sheet. Oh, Philo's. Oh. It's a fun story. <laughs> a week? That's quite... What? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what's happening? Is Kazuki back again? Oh no, this girl, okay. Yomogi. Um, there's a lot of people here. I don't think you can take all of them on. What? Well, what, what do you expect? Yeah, like, go home. Yeah. All right, Katana. Okay. Come on, we have the Katana here with us now, so. Wait, what? Oh. It buffs them up, I'm guessing. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, yeah, she cannot hurt you. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Oh. Thunder sword. Damn. So she's also a cardinal or a vassal weapon wielder. What? Come on, guys, everyone attack at the same time. Why are you taking turns? <laughs> 
Why are you taking turns attack at the same time? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep. Back in the good old days, you know. Okay, one thing I noticed. Teresa's hair and the jewel changes, isn't it? It's red today. Well, obviously, there's so many of... Whoa, what is that? Looks like some cursed demonic sword or something. It is a freaking... It has a freaking eyeball. Alright, this girl is kind of slow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. Oh, whoa. Oh, nice. Whoa. That's a tentacle sword. What the hell? Oh, my God. Wow. So, this was what Kyo. Oh, maybe it will work on it because she, he's a hunter hero. Yeah, it's working. Nice. Oh, damn. It has a self-destruct function as well. Wow. There you go. This is what Kyo did. Yeah, but I can slap you. Damn, so he literally made her a walking bomb. Great. We know a lot about him. What? Okay. No, what does he want? I don't believe that. Shut up. He's doing all of this to stop the waves? I don't believe he's doing this to stop the waves. He's like that type of a selfish person. Yeah. <laughs> mm. No, I don't. No, I don't believe that. No, not for Kyo. No, I'm with Nafumi this time. Okay, I can, I can understand that. That I can agree with, but not th that Kyo is not doing that for. Oh boy. Shouldn't someone stay with her? Like, he can't even. I really, oh my god, please someone stay with her. You can easily attack. Damn, that's a big fish. <laughs> Fortress. Okay. Yeah.
Her home. Oh wait, they're childhood friends? Oh my god, that's even better. I really don't want Kyo to have like a sad backstory. I cannot, please. Oh. Who strange clothes? Uh. It's country. Hmm. Yeah, but I think you probably and ignored it. Oh boy. Oh god. Their faces when the yeah, obviously. Obviously, like that's what he's been doing and like what happened to her hands? I don't think you can talk to this guy. I don't know why, but Mm. Well, as she said, she decided to ignore all the things that he did. So I think I guess that's also kind of like a sin. Oh my god, this looks good. Wow. Barbaroi armor. Ah. Nice. <laughs> Her hair color again changed. Ah, wow, that's that's cute. Pillow pajamas. <laughs> oh no. Where's young master? There you go. Well, you're the king. Yeah. Or the young master. <laughs> okay. Up, oh, the boat is here. They're jinxing it. Oh my god, they're jinxing it. Ah, I knew it. They just jinxed it. It started. There you go. What happened to Kazuki? Wasn't he... Wave of Calamity? What? What is that? Yeah. Oh my god, they're getting teleported. And Nafumi won't be teleported because he's a hero of the other world, isn't it? Yeah. So all the heroes of this world get got teleported. Oh no. They're again just Yeah, apparently. Well, she realizes now at least.
Yep. I guess we did, um, like, you know, I'm talking about now for me. They do have experience fighting waves. So, I guess that will help out here, but, but they're in the, the other place. Uh, the people here, the heroes here got teleported. So, yeah, that's a problem. I guess Nafu will have to go by foot. <laughs> or something else, I don't know what he's going to do now. Maybe the dragon hourglass, can he use that to teleport? I don't know. Like even, even Ethnobaltis has been teleported, so and Ethnobalt can't take them and bring them to the place. Damn, one thing I realized, <laughs> whenever you go, go to like a new world or something, at least in this show, the first thing you should do always is contract a good blacksmith <laughs> oh boy like even in um her, his own world <laughs> you know, th th that guy he helps us out and here again you know like up until now nafumi has not been able to use his full potential but as soon as he got uh like in the help of a blacksmith there you go he has a new weapon uh, not weapon but a new armor new everything and yeah, his stats are up again. <laughs> That's it. I'm guessing the next episode is the final one. This has 12 episodes, or is it 13? Um, I think it's 12. Uh, let me check Shield Hero Season 2. It's probably 12, because it seems like it will, it will have 12 episodes. Uh, no, 13. Oh, no, sorry. Two more episodes. So, like the the next part, I guess, is also like you know confirmed. We don't know when it's going to come, but it is going to come in a few. I'm guessing after a few months or something. Like the next part of this, the the second core of season two, I guess you could say. <clears throat> okay, the this episode, um, we're united with everyone. Uh, Raftalia, Philo, everyone is united, and uh, Raftalia is you know like. Here, trying to <clears throat> get used to the new people and everything. She looks at Philo, and Philo is like a humming fairy, kind of flying around. It's so crazy. You can see that how, like you know, her his like you know, Philo's race completely changes if he if she goes to a new world. Here, there's a new set of skills she has. She cannot fight properly like she used to, but she can use buffs and everything. Like that's so crazy, isn't it? Like like imagine transferring from one world to another, and your whole class changes to like a different species and <laughs> you can do some new stuff like wow anyways um <clears throat> okay so uh raftalia meets rafchan as well the little um raccoon uh, familiar and uh, yeah everyone is together so they're going to go back to is on us place before that we get a little glimpse of what's happening to kazuki and my god i was not expecting that to happen so raftalia told him not to move was actually something i thought she just said because she wanted to scare him or something or like you know like something like that but it turns out she she actually said that so that you know like she the thing that happened today doesn't happen so I'm guessing if they stayed, if he stayed calm and safe at one place and let the girls heal him, he would have probably been fine. But since he moved, like the, the thing activated or whatever happened and he got cut in half, which Aftalia said not to do. He said like, don't move if you want to keep your life. Something like that. Now Kyo comes in and obviously they're trying to patch up Kazuki. Kyo, Kyo also says that, uh, don't move. But obviously Kazuki is like, huh, tries to move and bam, just dead over there. So, all right, now here we meet another person, Yomogi, I think that was her name, who is apparently the childhood friend of Kyo. I, I'm going to call her her childhood friend because, you know, she and Kyo were friends from the childhood, so. Okay, now... <clears throat> They see Ethnobal's boat and Kyo is like, oh, they're already here. 
they're going to go back and your mogi is like i'm going to take care of them now on the other side we'll see uh, obviously glass reunited with um what's her name uh kizuna now one thing i can notice again which is glass and uh, not glass teresa's hair changes isn't it like an, according to the jewel that she has in her head her hair changes so what actually happens does her whole jewel change or does the color change only that's one thing i i don't know oh i think the color changes like the jewel doesn't change the color of the jewel changes and according to that i'm guessing the um hair color also changes now i'm guessing is this something has something to do with emotion or something like for example uh, i don't know like maybe like you know if she's like in a like a, an angry mood or something or like she, she's like going to fight or something her hair changes red or something not hair but her jewel changes and according to the jewel maybe her hair and her eye color also changes like i'm kind of curious about this like why her hair color changes and i'm pretty sure it has something to do with some kind of thing maybe her emotions maybe something else maybe her state of mind or maybe what she's trying to do maybe because of that it changes because in today's episode we saw two colors red and blue okay it was blue most of the time and in the middle when they were like you know went to the uh, blacksmith and they were fighting and everything against yomogi she had red hair so you know, like I, I can see that the um <clears throat> like from the comments i can understand that uh, they're skipping a lot of things most probably that was in, in the novel and stuff so maybe they also did not explain this or maybe we're going to get an explanation in the future but I'm, I'm sure the novel has some kind of an explanation for her hair anyways i'm thinking too much about her hair <laughs> okay um now <clears throat> kizuna glass there have united and glass uh, kizuna is like okay i i have a question for you like you know, this is something that i got to know from now for me it went back to their place and here kizuna is mad kizuna is like what the hell like you know you thought that uh, going to their world and fighting them and trying to kill them is going to like you know stop the waves now this is one thing i was also curious about i was so curious about the fact that why does excuse me why does uh, kizuna does not know about the waves number one number two if she doesn't know about the waves why was she summoned that ask a like, you know, question i got answered today she said something like uh, a beast uh, king of a beast or something a dragon some dragon beast uh she was actually summoned here to kill or defeat that beast that was the reason why she was summoned so she was not summoned for the waves so there are still a few questions that i am having now then that is like so if she was summoned here for the killing the beast why does glass therese and lark they are talking about the waves so this, did the whole wave thing start after Kizuna was trapped in that dimension? Did that whole wave thing start after that? Otherwise Kizuna should have known about the waves. If Glass, Therese and Lark knew about it, Kizuna should also know. So the only explanation that I, am, I have now is that she was summoned here for killing some other thing, some, some beast. And since she doesn't know about the waves, I'm concluding that she got trapped before the whole wave thing came. And they got to know about it. I might be wrong though, but either way, um, that's one question answer that she, why she was summoned here if she doesn't know anything about the waves. Uh, but another thing also kind of gets answered. I was thinking like, why, why, like you know, why uh, do Glass, Therese, and Lark try to go to Ralphmuir's world and kill them? They did say that oh, defeating you guys is going to stop the waves. I was thinking was that like an actual thing was like you know there was that like a like a proof uh, proved uh information that yeah like you know someone like you know like the, somehow or the other they know and they're 100 percent confirmed that if they defeat the waves from the uh, like you know the heroes from the other world the wave will stop is it like a confirmed information i up until now thought that it was Turns out it was not. So they just assumed that if you go to the other world and kill, defeat the cardinal heroes, 
then the waves will stop. So they just assumed it and did all of this. Is that what was what's happening here? So like I can't blame them because obviously they're desperate at this fact. Like I could easily say that oh like you know like they're so irresponsible or something. Like they didn't even confirm the fact that oh this is going to happen and but went and tried to kill now for me and the other heroes. I could have easily said that, but I can understand they're desperate. Like you know, like if you if you get to know your world is going to end, and they have like a timer in front of you, like obviously you're going to try to do everything and anything to stop it. So probably desperation was the reason why they were like, oh, let's go to the other world and let's try to kill the heroes and see if the timer stops, something like that. But the fact is that it was not confirmed, so they don't even know if they defeat the heroes of the other world. The waves will stop or not it's it's not a proved thing so okay and obviously kizuna is mad at this kizuna is like so you just assumed and you, you went there and tried to kill them and then she says something like um like if, if this was up to me i would not do that i would try to find out a different path it's so funny how kizuna is that type of like you know like the whole shonen protagonist trope she has that like we're going to we everyone if we work together we can accomplish this you know um or something like uh oh i'll find out some other way to save the world everyone will be happy no one will be sad no one needs to die this type of a point of view which is so interesting to see that <laughs> for me is completely the opposite even though he's the main character which i can very much understand why he <laughs> what happened to him in season one has completely changed him and like the thing that Nafun says here he's like what would you do if that doesn't work you know <laughs> he's like he's asking the actual questions and Kizuna's like I don't know like and I don't know what to do but I'm surely I'm going to find out a way so it's so interesting you know like since you know the I feel like Nafun would also be like this if stuff that happened in season one never happened to him you know he would have probably been like this, you know, in this world. He would have also said something like, yeah, work together, friendship, power. We're going to do this. All everyone will be happy. That type of a thing his mentality would be. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Season one scarred him so much that he's just like, yeah, like, you know, I'm not buying this, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, you, what you're saying has no proof or no actual um, reasoning as to that is going to happen. So I don't believe you. That type of a thing Nafumi is here. Well, Kizuna is just completely shown in protagonist mode. So that's just so funny to see, you know. <laughs> Either way, um, Kizuna is like, yeah, we, we will be able to do this. Like, you know, let's see if we can find another way. Which I also think is something, uh, yeah, that would be for the best. Because at, at this point, everyone's kind of friends now. So obviously we cannot... You know, like we just cannot attack Glass and all, and I doubt Glass is also going to attack us. After getting that scolding from Kizuna, she's probably not going to do that. So yeah, at this point, I feel like Kizuna's plan is better because I don't think we can actually fight amongst each other now. At at this point, after so much happened, you know, after we helped each other out so much, so yeah, I guess Kizuna's option is the best bet here. <clears throat> Either way, but but it's it's like you know like you're trying to find something out which might or might not even exist. She's trying to find some way which might not even exist. So that's something. But anyways, um, all right. Next we see in Kyo's place, um, Kazuki is in like a test tube or whatever thing on a liquid, and those two girls. Oh my God, these two, these two girls had the brilliant idea of going. <laughs> and asking Kyo for something that was going to make them even stronger. Like, <laughs> you know what happens to these type of people? I've seen like at least, like, you know, in almost every anime, I've seen at least one person who always is like, oh, like, you know, I want power. So, like, you know, give me something that can make me powerful. And some crazy person just gives him some pill or some kind of something. Like, and the person tries to consume that and gain more power, unfortunately becomes a monster and loses all rational rationality and then becomes like the next boss monster which the main characters will have to fight and defeat that's how it goes 
So as soon as they're like, oh, give me something that's going to make me stronger. I'm like, well, your fate is sealed now. You're probably going to become some kind of a monster because this is Kyo we are talking about. He's probably going to hand them something that's going to make them lose their humanity or something like that is going to happen. So there you go. Um, we still don't know what he was doing with uh, Kizuki, uh, Kazuki. Like, is he really trying to revive him or he's doing something else? I think he's probably doing something else. So I don't know. We'll see. Either way. Um, oh, another thing we have to know. Um, Lark is like the young master of this place. <laughs> so yeah, that's something. Now we meet a new character, uh, Remina. No, Romina. Okay, Romina. The blacksmith of this place. And... Uh, uh, Ramina's friends with um, Jizuna and it's funny how their names also rhyme <laughs> Ramina and Kizuna okay um, so <clears throat> but Kizuna comes and Kizuna is like oh we need some good stuff you know like some armor some sheath and all this and she is you know, asking her to make stuff while the, all of this was happening sudden like you know noise outside we come outside and see Yomogi She's like, I have come here to deliver punishment in behalf of Kyo or whatever. I've come here to deliver divine punishment to the holder of the cardinal and the vessel weapons. And there you go. Another new enemy. And <laughs> the first thing I said was like, what the hell? Like, you're one single person. Can you count how many people are here? Glass, Lark, Therese, <laughs> um, uh, K uh, Kizuna um uh nafumi filo as well i guess um raftalia and uh yeah and and, and the the blacksmith girl or whatever so like what can <laughs> you do amongst so many people and oh my god now she does say that oh i'm so much outnumbered or something like that she says <laughs> oh my god okay one thing oh my god I, did i forget her name i'm so sorry that what's the girl's name the, the green haired girl i just forgot her name rishia oh god i forgot her for a second there rishia is also there my god like she's been quiet for so many episodes that i've completely forgot about her for a second <clears throat> okay anyways um so we begin the battle she's strong however you know we can see that she can fight quite well and uh, and i'm pretty sure like everyone was taking it very coolly and very calmly because there were so many of them you know like they could have easily defeated yomugi if they all just just attack them at the same time but they're just taking turns going and attacking the her <laughs> and so yeah now <clears throat> Her weapon is weird, first of all. At first I thought, was that like a vassal weapon or is she like another cardinal hero? She's not a cardinal hero, I realized, because nobody recognized her, number one. So I thought maybe she's a vassal hero or something. Like a vassal we uh, weapon wielder. The that sword. Turns out, no. That weapon is just something that Kyo made for her. I think that's what she says. Yeah, I think so. Either way, that weapon has like a weird eyeball in it, which is a very much a big red flag. Like, don't wield any weapons which has eyeballs in it. <laughs> and an eyeball that moves, so... Oh my god. So, this thing was actually, I guess, something that Kyo made. Just like... Okay, um, they look at the sword. The sword starts glowing. The eyeball is there. Kizuna says that if you don't want to die, you should throw away that sword. Yomogi, as always, likes like a childish way to get me to surrender. You made this sword. Oh boy. I, I, okay. Well. Now, I feel like this is one of the biggest. Like, I was so surprised when she tried to say something, like started like a backstory about Kyo. Because usually in these type of situations, Whatever persons we don't like, they get a, like a sad backstory and by the end of it we are like Ah, maybe that person is not so bad after all. Maybe circumstances made him do that. That's how we, it usually goes. But 
Why I felt it's so weird is because she started a backstory, but the fact is that he actually gave a killer sword which is probably going to suck up all her magic or something or some, like kill take up all her life force that type of a tentacle sword he gave her which uh, which would actually blow up by the end of it so basically he tried to kill her and she was starting a backstory about kyo so i was not sure where this is going because I, like what i know is whenever someone gets a backstory that person <laughs> Like, you know, like we, we actually get to see them in a new light. But I was not seeing that going to happen with Kyo because Kyo tried to kill her. So I was actually not sure where this is going. And I'm still not sure where this is actually going because by the end of it, I still think, yeah, Kyo is like Yomo, Yomo he, I think that was her name. Yeah, just try to say that, oh, he did all of these to stop the waves. But by the end of it, we realized that no, he was trying to start a wave. So there you go. Even a backstory wasn't able to redeem this guy. What? What a legend. <laughs> Kyo, is, Kyo is one of the best. Even a backstory wasn't able to redeem him. That's how high level of a person he is. <laughs> God damn. Like, st strongest of strongest enemies and, you know, the vilest of people, you know, characters just redeems themselves whenever a backstory comes in. Unfortunately, Kyo is an exception, I guess. So there you go. Anyways, the sword, like, you know, starts, tries, becomes a tentacle, tries to suck up from some web magic for her, from her or something, and then ultimately blows up. And, uh, yeah, and she realizes, like, what's happening, and she's like, kill me. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Kizuna is like, all right, we're going to make you talk, you know, like, we need to know what is that you were saying talking about what noble goal Kyo has and what he's trying to do. And they take her to her place. And uh, now I was kind of worried about this part because Kizuna cannot attack humans, you know, her weapon. So I was really worried that uh, Yomogi was left alone with her. So I was thinking maybe, you know, like maybe Yomogi would like, like, I don't know, tie her up and run away or something, do something like that. But nothing like that happened, that's kind of a good thing. Oh my god, Kizuna is so defenseless, it blows my mind. She just, <laughs> she just, like everyone just went away. She even opened up uh, Yomogi's uh, handcuffs. And she can't even fight with her weapons against humans. Like how defenseless this girl can be, anyways. Um, so they go in and uh, they start talking and obviously Yomogi is like I realized after like you know listening to like when Yomogi was talking about how Kyo is you know, doing these kind of things for some grand goal or something and like, obviously Nafumi was like but the people who he killed and who he made suffer Ost and everyone you know, like what about them? I don't know, the rage that was in his eyes at that moment, Yomogi saw that. And I think Yomogi, as he, she says at the end, that she realized that even if Kyo is doing this apparently for some grand goal of stopping the waves, the way he's doing this is not correct. That was the thing. And she realized that. And she re decided to stop Kyo. And that's what she says to Kizuna. And... She talks about how she and Kyo were like, you know, childhood friends. Um, Kyo was like a weird child, but, you know, like he taught her a lot of things, gave, you know, gave him a lot of knowledge, this and that. And she de apparently decided to become his bodyguard. And uh, there you go. So basically what's happening here is like Kyo has been doing all of this without letting Yomogi know these kind of shady things that he has been doing without letting her know. So Yomogi was under the impression and he was doing all of this for trying to stop the waves and a few sacrifices she thought that oh these are necessary sacrifices she decided to not look and ignore as she said ignore I also ignored and uh, again Kizuna is again talking about how he she wants to talk with Kyo and like stop this in a like a meaningful peaceful way I'm like no 
like I haven't seen that girl like I was I was constantly in this portion I was saying that like oh my god they're giving like a backstory and everything and I was like for for god's sake please don't make Kyo a person who we would actually like by the end like as I said like you know every backstory in by the end of it we end up liking that person I didn't want that to happen at least for Kyo because this guy is just bad completely he's cocky he's just you know like does bad stuff um you know very um selfish obviously tried to kill yomogi the person who has been trying to protect him he tried to kill her and so many things you know like i don't want him to redeem himself from like some sad, sad backstory i don't want that that's why i was constantly saying that please no no more backstories that's going to make him a good person at least not for kyo i love backstories which change people that's really nice you know like if a good villain is there if that if there's like a sad backstory that changes that person we start liking that villain that's good i love that not for kyo however i don't want that happening to kyo so thank god <laughs> that didn't happen by the end of it we understand he's still a piece of crap so there you go i think so at least you know like from the looks of it like you know he he's still he's, he's an evil person so I don't know why he's doing this that's that's the question i was kind of thinking about mm, we'll get to know probably in the future but for now yeah you know like we we still he's still a bad person either way and as i was saying like, you know kizuna was talking about how he's going to talk and bring this to a peaceful end um i was like no kyo is not that type of a person he's definitely not going to talk like we saw what he did and uh, like you know what i i think what was the re you know why the re reason why um kizuna was so much kind of talking about how oh we're going to talk to kyo and bring this to a peaceful end because she doesn't know kyo you know if she saw him and knew what he did she wouldn't say this i'm guessing she she don't doesn't know who he is she's never even met him i think yeah so there you go that's one of the biggest reason i think why she she thinks that yeah maybe we can talk and come to an understanding <laughs> nah nafumi and everyone saw him and we have experience in dealing with him so we know that's not going to happen this person is not going to accept that and one thing that yomogi says is kind of interesting she says like i'm also going to suffer with kyo at first i was going to say like no why why would you suffer with him like, no, that's his fault but then i remembered and i realized that she said something about she ignored all the bad she thinks she he did which if you think of it in this way ignoring something bad happening and helping the person in doing that is also a form of a sin or a bad thing so for that sin i guess he needs to she needs to make her fair share of amen, amends like Kyo will have to like you know face justice and suffer so does Yomogi at a certain extent I would say so that's why I was like yeah I think she she also needs to make amends for it either way uh next we see now for me uh with his new armor Barbaroi armor plus two cursed wait it's cursed oh it was it was made from the dragon thing oh god I wonder why like you know like what what is the curse that is going to do is is it like going to like take out like chunks of his health or something like you know like usually that's what happens you, if you wear some cursed equipment either you cannot even like you, know, you cannot like I remember playing a game where there was like a cursed equipment if you equip it you cannot take it out you have to go to the church and get it taken out and pay some money for it but the curse uh, like you know cursed equipment would be very strong like that's like an advantage and a disadvantage of using them and there's also a few cursed armors and things i think which just takes up chunks of your health every second you wear it but gives you like a huge boost in power in exchange like this is like the usually cursed equipment that i've come in video games i don't know what this cursed thing does and i'm guessing it probably has some kind of a debuff with it in exchange of the immense amount of power or defense that it provides something like that i'm guessing either way now for me is uh dress looks amazing i love it i am so curious how did nafumi gain so much levels he's level 75 i remember two episodes ago he was 30 or something so 
Let me know. They skip stuff, isn't it? I'm pretty sure they skipped some stuff here. Like, how did this level happen? Jump. And uh, what about his shield? Like, you know, what can his shield do now? Like, did he like put stuff in his shield again? Like, in, in Nafumi's world, like his shield is like crazy. He put so many things in it that his shield can like, you know, transform into so many things. We saw none of that in this, like, you know, in this world. So I'm guessing he has been putting stuff in his shield and making it change. So I'm pretty sure that's been happening, but they didn't show it. So let me know if they skipped stuff here, this portion or something. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Rafta is level 80. Obviously, he, she actually fights. That's why. Philo is level 64 and Rishia is 78. Okay. That's, that's, that's decent. Mm, and obviously, I think, um, what's her name? Uh, Izuna is like level 120 or something. She was, I don't remember. Either way. Yeah, new weapons, new swords, and like I said, like you know, whenever you go to a new world, <laughs> at least in this show, try to get a contract with a blacksmith. <laughs> it's going to make your life so much easier. So, and yeah, here we go. And and Risha, uh, not Risha, Kizuna talks about how he she used all the raw materials used uh, from the the dragon beast or whatever, used them to make this. So there you go. <laughs> the bill, she let it, let Lark handle it. Now, they are going, getting ready to go and meet Kyo, you know, and talk, apparently. But Kyo did something which, and like, you know, they were saying, talking about how, oh, we have so much time. I was like, wow, they did that. They're, they're, they're actually triggering flags here. They're jinxing the whole thing. I knew something was going to happen as they were talking about how much time they have. And there you go, the, the time has started, the waves have started again. Kyo has done something, I don't know what he did. And, uh, but either way, you know, since the wave has started, all the heroes of this world and their allies got teleported to the place where the waves are going to happen. Nafumi is stuck in the place. He's already, he, like, you know, he, he's not a hero of this world. That's why I think he was not teleported. And there you go. And that's what's happening now. Obviously, Yomugi realizes at this moment that Kyo has not been trying to stop the waves. He has been trying to create one. And there you go. Like, she realizes her mistake of actually trusting him. And this is the first time that um, Rishia sees a wave. Not Rishia, sorry. Um, Kizuna sees a wave and she says something like, this is the thing that Naofumi and Glass has been fighting against. And that's where it ends so yeah uh, i'm guessing uh we're going to fight the waves and also fight kyo in the next two episodes we'll see what happens so that's it guys thanks for watching this was my reaction to the rising of the shield hero season 2 episode number uh, 11 yeah if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so that's it guys thanks for watching i will see you guys next week with another episode of the rising of the shield hero until then goodbye and have a nice day